Hi, it's me, Jackie Flax, and this I want to introduce you to tea with me. Yes, it's tea. That's a pot of tea, uh, a little jug of milk, and a cup of tea, and then your biscuits. Biscuits, what we call them, not for the doggies. No, this is not for Sadie. This is biscuits. This is what English people call, what Americans call cookies. Now, how to make a pot of tea. You're going to heat up the pot by putting a little bit of hot water in, throw away the hot water, and then throw in your bags. I know, I'm sorry, Paul Burrell. Paul Burrell was the um, butler that belonged to um, Princess Diana, who did work for Her Majesty the Queen, and he always used um, tea leaves, and, and they make such a bloody mess, so I'm sorry, bags is the way to go. Chuck in three bags and fill it up with hot water and then let your pot stew. Now three bags is one for me, one for Alexandra and one for the pot. Then you put a little bit of milk in here. I always put, now in Paul Burrell's video, he adds milk after he puts in the tea. I actually like to put milk in before my tea because I know how much milk I want in. So I put in my milk, then I add the tea and then I dump my biscuit as I chat. Now we're going to chat. We're going to ch chat about well, whatever we're going to chat about. But this is tea with Jackie Flax. Okay, so dunk, dunk, and let's talk. Okay, just because the government and the establishment say the inquest is over doesn't really mean that it's over. I mean, I know she was an inconvenient woman. This is uh, late Princess Diana, and the inquest is just an inconvenient inquest. And her death, well, that was also inconvenient. And I'm sorry, I know you want to just draw a line underneath it so you can move on. Well, hey, hello, I've got some more information for you that actually didn't show up at the inquest. Or there was a ton of information that did show up at the inquest that you ignored. Now, the first thing's first, I'm going to have a dip of my biscuit while the helicopter goes by. Uh, first thing's first is if you look back at my past blogs, I was talking about the Fiat Uno. Now you remember the little Fiat Uno that Lord Scott Baker instructed the jury when he was summing up, forget the Fiat Uno, it's not important and it wasn't there. How can you forget the Fiat Uno? Well now because of that Fiat Uno and I spent a whole blog talking about it or part of a blog um, and then my I, I have a little friend in Australia, I don't know, he might be big, I don't know how tall he is, um, his name is Dimmy, and he contacts me and says, hello Jigs, and that's my Australian accent, and he hates my Australian accent, I love accents me, and I, I, I sort of was saying, hello, hello, it's Dimmy, and I was trying to do my whole blog in Australian, and I thought it was quite a good accent, but he wrote to me and he said, please, that is the worst Australian accent, and you know, Americans haven't got an ear for accents either. So you were probably sitting at home going, hey, I think she does a really great, you know, Australian accent, you know, that British girl. But actually, for as far as the Australians were concerned, get off the Australian accent. Now, he contacted me, Dimmy, in Australia, hello Dimmy, and he said my friend Chloe was in Paris that night, and she took a video of that Fiat. So I got all excited and we contacted Chloe and when I say we, I have an associate in London called Simon who has um, a website called newsalliance.com and if you go to News Alliance, um, you check, actually you go to my channel and you see there's a big eye with a line through it, well that takes you to his channel and Simon contacted Chloe. Now Chloe actually was part of the inquest. So the Jack Trust channel wasn't just commenting on the inquest, we actually got to be part of the inquest at that point because he contacted Chloe and sort of said, what's all this about, you know, what about the, the um, transcript you made for the trial? Because you can read her transcript if you go to newsalliance.com. And she said, well, they didn't ask me to testify, they just phoned me and asked me to give a statement. And in my statement, I said that I followed the Fiat Uno, and then she was flown by Oprah. Remember Oprah? Oprah, Queen of the World? That is the video where I talk about the Fiat Uno. And, um, and um, the BBC picked up that video, and they've been using it um, for the last 10 months. Every time the Fiat Uno's come up in conversation, they got to use Chloe's 
Chloe's not happy about that. Anyway, um, that's by the by, but Simon got a confession from Chloe, or not confession, but Chloe admitted something to Simon at newsalliance.com that is exclusive because she did not tell this to the inquest, she did not tell this to the inquiry. What she admitted to Simon was that the mob that was outside the hotel on the 31st of August was, it was, it was horrific. It wasn't the kind of mob of people that would normally show up if Diane, I mean look, wherever Diana went, you can say a mob would show up because people would want to see her, people would want to take pictures or whatever. This was a very different mob. This was an angry mob. This was pa it was pandemonium outside outside the uh, the Ritz Hotel that night, and it was an angry, violent mob. And something made her jump into her car and follow that Fiat Uno and the Mercedes when it left the hotel. And she got video footage of this Fiat. And one thing that she told Simon that she did not tell the inquest and it was not on the transcript, that in her opinion, it was a conspiracy. Da-da, where's my music? Da-da. I mean, I know, look, for you and I, and all the people that sit and like to have a chat with me, we know it was a conspiracy. I mean, you know, who are we falling? But I mean, she didn't want to say anything and upset the apple cart and, and get herself into trouble, because people are still frightened. People are still scared, and, and you know, it's not Henry VIII now, it's not like, oh, I'm going to chop off my wife's head, and if you want to say something about it, you're next. It's not quite that now, but it's still pretty scary. I mean, who knows what happened to James Addison? We know that he shot his mouth off. That was the man that was driving, allegedly driving the Fiat Uno, that Scott Lord, remember that if you hear the word Lord in front of a name, that's kind of like, a you know, once somebody's wearing a black hat, somebody's wearing a white hat, and I'm not saying that everybody that is a lord is wearing a black hat, but in this instance, when you're looking at an inconvenient inquest, an inconvenient woman, if somebody's a lord and giving testimony, you know that they're in the tank for the establishment. Well, it's a pretty clear indication. Anyway, so Lord Scott Baker, running the inquest, instructs the jury to forget about the Fiat Uno. It wasn't there. Well, apparently, it was there. Uh, well, according to somebody who was there herself and who admitted to us, Jack, Jackie Flax, Simon at News Alliance, that yes, she was there. The Fiat Uno was there. The, the mob outside the, uh, the Ritz Hotel was violent and horrific, was her words. It was a horrific atmosphere, that's her literal words. And it was a conspiracy. Now, if there's anything else you want to chat about, you can contact me and we'll sit down and we'll have tea. We'll have tea and we'll chat. And I'm going to dunk another biscuit because uh, that's what I like to do with my tea. I like to dunk it. Okay, and I'll see you next week. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Having tea.